and you can see when I hover over revenue, it updates the information that's displayed in our group element here. But when I actually select to click a product in our chart, it also updates the last click point. Hello, my name is Lachlan Kirkwood, and today I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about building bar charts with Bubble. Using the Chart.js plugin from TechBlocks, I'm going to give you a rundown on creating every single different type of bar chart to help visualize and display any static or dynamic data you might have within your database. This will include creating both single and multi-series bar charts. We'll also learn how we can display those both vertically and horizontally. And then from there, I'll be explaining how we can create both stacked bar charts as well as 100% stacked bar charts before wrapping up by explaining how you can create events when you hover or click on any of the data displayed within the chart. I want to try and explain everything in as much detail as possible, so let's just jump right into our bubble editor and we can get started. So today I'm going to be running you through the process of creating a series of different type of bar charts within Bubble. I've kept a checklist within Notion today so you can get a really good idea of what it is that I'll be walking you through. And if you need any of these style of bar charts, I'll be sure to cover each one in as much detail as I can. I'm going to start off by working on a static multi-series bar chart. And by static, I mean a bar chart where the data source is manually added on our behalf. So in this case, we wouldn't be pulling dynamic data from our database. Instead, we're just going to add in our own custom values. And this style of chart can be quite useful if you're creating something like an infographic on a static landing page. Let's jump into my bubble editor and I'll show you how we can get started. Over in our canvas here, the first thing we'll need to do is of course install our Chart.js plugin. So if we open up our plugins library, you can search to add a plugin. In this case, you will need to install the Chart.js plugin, and this will be the plugin created by TechBlocks. And what I love about the Chart.js plugin is that if you open up the link with the example it provides in the plugin description, you'll not only get a good glimpse at the type of visualizations that you can create with the plugin, but one of the key things about this plugin is how rich the documentation is. There's extended documentation and examples for every different type of chart you would like to build in. And there's also documentation for configuring all the different key features within the element. Now, if you were to open any of these, you'll see plenty of examples of applications using the chart. And within those, you'll also be able to access the bubble editor that they were created in. So you can always get a thorough understanding of how each different chart is configured. If I close this though and jump back into my bubble editor here, we'll start by adding our very first chart onto the page. And as I mentioned, I'd like to start by adding in a static multi-series bar chart. So I will begin by adding a group element onto my page as a container. I will update the style of this group to be the group border option, just so it has a white background here. And then within this, I'll be adding in the chart.js bar chart element. I'll drag this out on our page, and then I can reduce the total size of that group there. And then also just center this horizontally and center this vertically. And then within this chart, I'm going to update this to be called static multi-series, just so I can keep a track of it within our build today. But the default style of this chart is of course a bar chart. I would like to update my legend to display at the bottom. If you didn't want to display a legend at all, you always have that option there. And you'll also see that by default, the chart comes with some static values added into it. So if we were to preview our bubble application right now, it would open up and display a list of static values added into our chart by default. What I would like to show you though is how we can update these values and then also update the formatting of the chart. So in my example for our static chart, we're gonna update the X values to be a number of years. And then I'll update the corresponding Y values to be the sum of revenue broken down by different products that will be aggregated into their corresponding year. So I'm going to start by deleting the values in our x-axis there. 
and I'm gonna add in my own static options. And as I mentioned, these will be a list of years. So the years will be 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. When you're adding in a list of static options, you just need to note that they will need to be separated with commas. And then if I would like to update the Y values of the charts, so the data that's displayed within each year, I will scroll right down to the bottom of our element inspector here. And I can see that we can now add a series of Y values as a list of static options. And as I mentioned for our Y values, I will be storing a list of products alongside the revenue that they have generated each year. So I'll start by calling our first series product A, and I'm happy to keep the default values here within our static option list. One thing I will just note though, is that you can see here we have five static options, whereas in our X axis, there was only four years. So we will just need to remove the last option and each static option will correspond with the year that matches its position in this order. So 120 here will be matched with the year 2018, 260 will be matched with the year 2019 and so on. I can then also update the series two to be called product B. I will then just remove the fifth Y value there. And then finally, I'm just gonna add in a third product here called product C. And this doesn't have any value, so I'm gonna add my own custom options in, say 180, 320, 470, and 550. Now, if I was to once again preview my application, you will now see that the values for both our X and Y axes have updated accordingly. You can see here that product A has generated $310 throughout 2021, whereas in 2020, it only generated $240 in revenue. So already you can see how powerful this element is in terms of creating a static chart. But while I'm here, what I'd like to do is also explain how we can update the styling of this chart and then also create our own custom tooltip here, which allows us to customize how we display the labels that a user will engage with. So let's jump back into our bubble editor. And one thing I would just like to note within our element inspector here is that you'll see no shortage of options to customize this chart in whatever way or format you would like. You can see here, you can customize the animation durations when it loads, as well as the grid lines that you add onto the charts background. And then you can even update your own data labels, which just displays the value of each bar without the user having to hover over and view that information. But the setting I'd like to change right now is the bar char settings. So at the moment, the width of these is 0.5. I'm just gonna update this to be 0.75. And then I'll also update the corner radius of these to be 0.5. And while I'm also here, I'd like to update the text that's displayed on my chart legion. So if I scroll right down to the bottom of our element, you'll be able to style the text of this like any other ordinary element within your bubble editor. So I'll update the font size here to be 16. I'll also update the style of this font to be Poppins. I'll choose Poppins 500. And that's all I'd like to change for the text. The only other styling change I'd like to update in our chart is just the color of product B. At the moment, it is a light silver. So I can't really see where that sits on our chart's background. So what I'll do is I'll just choose from a purple here and update the color of that. Now, if we were to preview our application, we can see how these changes will affect the overall styling of the chart. So as you can see, our chart is a little bit more visually pleasing now to our end users. And what I love about Chart.js is that unlike any other bubble chart plugin, you really do have complete control over how you design this full experience. Even to the point where, as I mentioned before, you can create your own custom tooltip here. So although this tooltip is able to display the data we need, I'm gonna show you how to create your own custom version of this using a group element within your bubble editor. Let's jump back into our editor here and I'm going to select to add in a group element anywhere on my page. I will update the style of this group to be the group border option. And I'm just gonna update the name to be called group tooltip. And now this is where you'll really start to see the power of the Chart.js plugin come into play. 
Because we're creating a custom tooltip within a group, you can use this to display any information you would like within your bubble editor. So you can pull dynamic information from your database about the data you'd like to display. You can reference data hovered or clicked on the chart, or you can even display dynamic data of a user's profile. So if you wanted to display things like their name and their profile photo, you have full control over the data that you can display. And so in this case for our static chart here, I'm going to just create a more enticing version of the data that was displayed in the default tooltip for this chart. So I'll start by displaying the year that someone is hovering over, as well as the revenue generated by the product that they're currently hovering over as well. So in order to do that, I'm going to select to add in a text element into this group. And from here, I'd like to insert dynamic data. And as I mentioned, I'll be displaying the text of the year first that someone is hovering over in our chart. So I'll select from our bar chart here. And as you can see, there is no shortage of options here that you can pull from the chart. But in this case, I just like to display the hovered item X value, which will be our year. And then because we're editing this text element like any other element within our bubble editor, I'll have full control over the styling that is displayed here as well. So I'm then gonna open up our rich text editor, highlight all that dynamic text and choose to bold the style of that. I'm also just going to shorten the text element because that is just going to display a year. And now I will copy this text element, drag it down. And below this, I'd like to display the revenue from the product that is currently being hovered on our chart. And this is fairly straightforward to add in. I'm going to once again, select from our bar chart that we've added onto the page. And then I would like to display the hovered Y value, which will be the revenue generated by the product. And then for this text, I'm just going to remove the bold formatting. And then I would like to format this as a currency. And then like any other formatting, I can choose to add in my thousand separator and select the currency to be dollars. I'll close that. And then the last thing I'd like to add to our custom tooltip is just a highlighted group that dynamically changes color based on the color of the product that we're currently hovering over. This is fairly straightforward to do. I'm gonna grab a group element. I will drag this into my existing group here. And then I will remove the default style, which then allows me to add in my own background color. I'll choose a flat color here. And then instead of adding in a manual color code, I can choose to insert dynamic data and of course, this will be able to integrate into our Chart.js plugin to reference the color that we had associated with any product. So I will select to display the color of the chart that we're viewing. It's Hovered Items Series Color. So if you remember, the item series was the products that we have added in across our Y values. So I'll select the Hovered Items Series Color there. I'll also update the roundness of this to be 20. And then I can just move this across in our group and close off the empty space here. And from here, integrating this group as a custom tooltip is as simple as creating a HTML element ID and then linking that to the chart itself. So if you're not familiar with creating ID attributes for elements, you'll just need to jump into the settings page of your bubble app, head over to the general tab, Scroll on down until you see the option here that says expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. You just need to tick that that is true. Then back in your design tab, you'll see at the bottom of any element you select that you can manually add a ID attribute. In this case, I'll be calling this tooltip one, and then I'll copy the ID attribute here, open up our chart, and the second input field here will allow you to now integrate the ID that you've just created. So you'll paste that in. And now if we once again preview our application, we'll be able to see how that now links with our chart in real time. So now over in our preview of the application, if I'm to hover over any of the product values here, you'll see that our custom tooltip is displayed. And right now it's displaying the year alongside the revenue. And then it also matches the color of the group with the group that's been displayed on our Y axis. So you can see it updates to purple and then blue there as well. 
And now, as I mentioned, you can do whatever you want within your custom tooltips. From here, I'm just going to jump into my Notion doc and check off that I finished building out a static multi-series bar chart, as well as also ran you through the process of creating your own custom chart tooltips using the Chart.js plugin. From here, the next style of chart I'd like to show you how to create is a chart that integrates with data dynamically stored within your database. So if I jump into my bubble editor and open up my data tab here, I've created a data type here that is just storing product sales. So within this data type, I have three different data fields. One is the product name, which will of course be similar to our previous experience where I had product A, B, and C. Then next I'll be displaying the revenue for each product. And then also the year that that revenue is recorded for. If I open up my app data and just zoom on into my database, you'll see that I've already taken the time to add in product revenue for each individual year. So I've got revenue for product A across 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And then I've done the same for product B and C. Now, if you're planning to experiment with the Chart.js plugin, I'd recommend just pausing the tutorial here and adding in some sample data of your own but I'm gonna keep things moving along. So I'm gonna jump back into my design tab. I'm just gonna zoom on out there as well. And then I'm going to add in another chart below our existing one. And as I mentioned, this bar chart will be a single line bar chart that will dynamically integrate with data stored in our database. So before I add in the chart, similar to before, I'll be adding in a group element onto our page. I'll update the default style of this to be the group border. And now within our group, I'll add in another bar chart element. I'll drag that out. And I'll be calling this chart single dynamic bar. And then similar to before, I'm gonna keep this chart type as a bar chart. I would like to display my legend at the bottom of my chart. Only this time, the difference here is that I would like to remove all of the static options within my X axis field here. And in this case, I'd like to insert dynamic data and display the data I had stored within my database for the product revenue by their years. So the end goal is ultimately to see how much revenue I generated in 2018, 2019, and so on, which will just aggregate all the product sales together in one. So I'll start by inserting dynamic data here, and I'd like to perform a search in my database for all of the product sales, which is the data type I had created. I would then also just like to sort these by the year and set the descending value to be no. And now that I'm searching through the data in our database, I'll just need to identify which specific years I would like to display at the bottom of my chart. So this will be the values of 2018, 2019, 2020, and so on. So I would need to select the group by option so I'm just gonna type in group there. And I'm going to select to group all of the data together within our database. In this case, the data I would like to group is the years that we have. Because when you think about it, in our database, we have a different year entry for every single product. So product A had revenue for 2018, product B had revenue for 2018, and product C also had revenue for 2018. So there were three entries in our database where 2018 was a year. And to avoid displaying 2018 three times, what I'm gonna do is choose to group all of our years together. So I'd like to select the type of grouping to be exact. So I'll be grouping the exact values of all the same years together. And once they're all grouped together, I will just need to choose what data field I would like to display within our X axis. I'm gonna select the years option. So now it will actually display the text value of the years. If I then scroll on down to my Y series values, instead of adding in a list of static options, what I'm gonna do is first just update the series name here to be called all products. And because I'm creating a single line bar chart, I'm only going to need one value within the Y series here. And so in order to remove any values from being displayed, you just backspace them within the element inspector here and when there's no value, it will remove that from displaying. But of course, I'll also need to remove the static list of choices here. And instead, what I'd like to do is group all of the revenue for each product 
alongside the corresponding year stored within our database. So I'll choose to once again insert dynamic data and like before I'll be searching through our database for all of the sales. I would also like to sort these again by the year setting the descending value to be no meaning it'll start from the beginning year 2018 and work its way down the list chronologically. And then like before, I will also need to group some data together. So I'll be grouping this data together again by the years stored in our database. So I'll select to group the years with the exact values. And then from all those years that have been grouped together, I'll just need to identify what particular data I'd like to aggregate and display as our Y axes. And this of course will be the revenue of all of our products together. So I will select that the aggregation will be the sum, so the total of our products revenues. And now beside this, I'll just need to choose to display the sum of all the revenue. And if I was to now preview this chart, I'll scroll on down to our bubble editor. You can see that we now have a single line bar chart on our page here which is aggregating all of the product's revenues by the corresponding years that we have stored in our database. And now while we're creating this dynamic chart, what I'd also like to show you is how we can transform the style of this chart to easily become a horizontal bar chart. So if we jump back into our bubble editor, what I'm gonna do is select the group that this chart sits within. I'm going to make a copy of it. And then I'm just gonna move this over to the side of our page here. I'll also just then select into our chart and update the name of this to be single dynamic bar chart horizontal. And then I can easily just select to update the chart style to be a horizontal bar chart. And then if I preview our application once again, we can now see how this data has been updated and displayed as a horizontal single line bar chart. So if I jump back into Notion, I'm going to check off that we've finished creating a dynamic single bar chart. And we've also created a duplicate, which was a horizontal version of that same chart. What I would like to explain though now is how you can create a dynamic multi-series bar chart. So if you're not familiar, the multi-series bar chart is a similar chart to the static bar chart that I had previously created. So essentially we have a value on our X axis and multiple series of values within our Y axis. And the process of creating this is much the same as our previous dynamic single bar chart here. What we'll do is jump back into bubble and I'm going to add in another group element onto this page here. I'll update the style of this group to be group border once again. I will then also just expand my page out so I can work within this space. And then within our group, I'll be adding another bar chart. I'll drag this out and I'll be calling this particular chart dynamic multi-series. Now for this particular chart, I'm going to keep it as a default bar chart. I'm gonna also update my legion to show at the bottom. And in this particular use case, I'm going to create a bar chart like our single line chart here. Only instead of displaying the aggregated revenue for all our products, I would like to break the revenue down to display the values for each specific product within each year. So within our editor, the X axis will be the same formatting as our previous single bar chart. So I'll insert dynamic data. I'll perform a search in our database for all of the bar chart sales. I will sort this by the year with the descending value as no. This of course is the same configuration that we had previously just used. And then I would like to group all of the years together in our chart here. So I'll add a new grouping. The grouping will be the years and it will be the exact value. And then for the text I'd like to display, I'd like to just choose from our year data field, which of course will be the actual value of the year itself. And then if I scroll on down to our Y series, I'll need to add three different dynamic series, one for each product. So I'll be calling this one product A, then there'll be product B, followed by product C. And then for the value that we'll be displaying for product A, I will remove the static list. I will insert dynamic data and I will perform a search through our database once again for the chart sales that we have stored. 
In this case though, I'd only like to search for the chart sales where the product name equals, and then I will remove the dynamic operator and type in the word product A, because that's the value that I was storing for our product A in our database. I will just note that this will be case sensitive. So this will need to be the exact same value based on the capitalization of the text stored in my database. I would like to select to group some data together within this chart. So I'll be selecting the group by option. And once again, I'll be grouping this data by the year. So I'll select that the group is the year and we'll be grouping the exact same values together just so we can find the unique value of each specific year in our database. And then like before, I will just be aggregating the sum, so the total amount of revenue. And of course, this will be only the revenue for product A because we had only searched through product A in our database. And then after that, I'd like to display the sum of that revenue. And now in order to replicate that across product B and C, we'll just need to once again, remove the static text here. And I will perform a search in my database for all of the chart sales. In this case, where the product name equals or backspace the dynamic operator, type in product B, scroll back down, and then I would like to group our data by the year. So I'll add new grouping. This of course will be the year. The type of grouping will be exact. Then the aggregation for these will be the sum of the revenue. And then finally, I will display the sum of revenue. And while we're editing our product B, I'm also just going to update the color that's displayed for the series to be purple once again. And we'll also just need to do the same for product C. But to save us this time, I'm just going to quickly jump ahead and add in this value now. Perfect. So as you can see, I've added in the revenue searching for product C there. While I'd paused the tutorial, I also jumped ahead and just added in some custom styling to this chart. I'd recommend you even pause the tutorial right now and do the same yourself. But over in my bubble editor here, I've got a preview of what this chart looks like. So as you can see, I'm displaying a list of the product revenue broken down into the year. So in 2021, I can see product A did $1,259, whereas in 2020, product A did $279. Now, instead of creating a custom tooltip for this chart, I wanna show you how we can create an experience that allows us to compare the revenue between years. And I'll be displaying this in a group beside this. Just to show you what this experience looks like that I'm trying to create, I have another bubble editor open here displaying a similar chart. And you can see when I hover over revenue, it updates the information that's displayed in our group element here. So it displays the revenue for the last product that we hovered as well as the year. But when I actually select to click a product in our chart, it also updates the last click point. So I can see now in 2021, product C generated $2,478 in revenue. And then I can easily just compare this to the previous years. So I can see the year before product C only did $467 in revenue. And now if we jump back into our bubble editor here, I'll explain how we can create this process. What I'd like to do is start by dragging out this group element across our page. And then within this group, I'll be adding yet another group. I'll drag this out. What I'll do is also just choose from any group here and just update the style of this to be a solid color that's just black. Drag that down. I will set the opacity of this to be 100. Might also just make that a lighter shade of black there. And then I'll just remove any borders on this and set the roundness to be 10. If I then jump back into my design tab, I can now see that group on my page. I can also just see it's overlapping with my chart there. So I'm just gonna move this to the side, move it up a tad. And now that should be in line. And now I'm just gonna show you a shortened version of how we can create this experience today, just cause I don't wanna take up too much of your time. But what I'd like to do is jump over into my visual elements here and grab a text element. I'm gonna drag that out. And just to save time, I'm gonna choose from Bubble's default H3 subheading light option here. 
And I will update this text to display last point hovered. I will close off the height of that element. And then below this element, I would like to display the year of the last product that was hovered. So I will just copy this text element, drag this below, make sure it's in line. And then I will update this static text to display the word year, semicolon. And then I would like to insert dynamic data and display the year that was last hovered within our chart. So I can insert dynamic data here and I'll be selecting from our dynamic multi-series chart, which is the chart beside this. And in this case, I would like to display the value of the hovered item X value. The X value was of course the year. And what I love is you don't actually need to worry about having to set any custom states to store a temporary value of the last hovered item. This is all handled within the Chart.js plugin. So it just saves you a ton of time having to set up and configure this feature. And now below the year here, what I'd like to do is display the products that we're currently hovering. So this will be the series values of product A, B, or C. I could once again, just copy this text element, drag this down, and I will just remove all the dynamic text there. And I'll type in the word product. And now I would like to display the product name of the last product that was hovered. So I'll insert dynamic data, choose from our dynamic multi-series chart and display the hovered item series name. Of course, the item series is the product as I just mentioned. And then if I'd like to display the revenue for this product that's being hovered, I can copy this text element once again. I will remove all of the text there and display the word revenue. And from here, I will insert dynamic data, select from our dynamic multi-series chart. And this time I'll be selecting from the hovered Y item. So the Y value was of course the revenue for each product. And then what I'd like to do is make sure I format that as a currency. So I'll select that the type of formatting is a currency. We add in our thousand separator and select the currency prefix to be a dollar symbol. And I'm just gonna keep things really basic and only display that data for this particular feature in our tutorial today. Because what I do wanna do is move on to show you how we can store the value of the last item that's being clicked within our chart. So in order to do that, I'm going to just select from all of our text elements here. I'm going to copy them. I'll move them across in our group. And then I will update the static text of our first element, which had previously said last point hovered. I'm gonna update this to display last point clicked. And then in terms of displaying the value of the item that's clicked, it's as simple as updating the operator here. So at this point in time, the year is displaying the hovered item X value. In this case, I would just like to instead display the clicked items X value. So if I just type in the word clicked, I can see there's an option for the clicked item X value. And now, as I mentioned before, that value will be null until a user actually clicks on a value in our chart. And then we also won't need to worry about setting any custom states. It will automatically set any of the data we need to store from our clicked item in the actual chart itself. And now that I've configured that field, I would like to update the value we're displaying for the product name. So the product, once again, I'm just going to type in clicked. And in this case, it's going to be the clicked item series, its name. So that's the name of the last product that was clicked. And then finally for revenue, I'm going to update this to display the clicked Y value and then format that as a currency. Now I'm not gonna worry about going into the details of how I formatted the previous example I showed you, but instead I'm just gonna show you a quick preview of what this experience looks like within my bubble editor now. So I'll choose to preview this. And then if I scroll on down to my page, I can see that the values are currently empty for our chart. If I begin to hover over particular items, these will update in real time. And it's only when I click an item that it will update in our text elements there. Of course, I can then begin clicking other charts and you'll see that that will update in real time. As I had shown you in my previous example though, you can really get creative with the style of data that you display within this group. So you can add product colors or you can add any other dynamic information you would like. I am just gonna jump back into Notion though and just check off that we've built out our dynamic multi-series bar chart. And we also now know how we can store values by clicking events that integrate with our chart. 
The last two charts I'd like to quickly explain to you, and I apologize if this video is running a little long. However, I just wanted to make sure I show you all of the available options within the Chart.js plugin, which means I'm going to quickly run us through the process of creating a stacked bar chart and then a 100% stacked bar chart. And if I was to just show you an example of what these look like in my separate bubble editor here, you'll see that a stacked bar chart essentially just is like a single bar chart, only instead of displaying multiple different series, it just stacks them on top of each other. And then a 100% stacked bar chart does much the same, but instead it will divide the total values and display their portion correctly. So in order to add these, we will jump back into our bubble editor. And then within our editor here, I'm going to add in another group element just as a background of our next chart. I will drag this out. I will update the style to be the group border option. And then of course I will add in another chart JS bar chart. And in this case, I'll be calling this chart just stacked. And I'll also update the chart type here to be a stacked bar chart. And I'll show my legend at the bottom. And similar to before, you'll have the option to display either static or dynamic data. In this case, I would like to once again display my dynamic data, which will be filtering the revenue by our products within their relevant years. So the data source for this bar chart will be the exact same as the data source for our previous chart. And to save you the time, I'm not going to run through the process of configuring this specific chart again. But I do just want to note that it'll follow the exact same setup process as when we had grouped our years on our X value. And then also when we had grouped our revenue by the product name within our Y series. So I'm going to jump into this chart. I'm going to pause this tutorial quickly, update the dynamic values on my end, and then continue this tutorial from there. Alrighty, so now that I've finished adding in the dynamic values for both my X value and the Y values in my bar chart here, we can now preview what this chart looks like within our bubble development environment. I'll scroll on down to our chart and you can now see that we have a stacked bar chart here, which just displays the total revenue generated in this year and allows us to break down a view of the revenue generated by each product. Now finally, the last chart I would like to display, and this is pretty straightforward, is just a 100% stacked bar chart instead of just the default stacked bar chart. To streamline this whole process, I'm just going to copy this group with the chart in it. I'll move this across. I will also just expand our page out there just so I can show you how this sits on our canvas. I will just drag that across. And now I'm going to select on our chart. And in this case, I won't need to update the dynamic X and Y values. The only thing I'll need to update here is the type of chart that I'd like to display. In this case, I would like it to be a 100% stacked bar chart. I personally also prefer the horizontal version of these charts. And then I can easily just preview my application once again. And if I scroll on down my canvas, you will now see a 100% stacked bar chart, which by default will display a label highlighting a percentage of each product's revenue for the year. As I had shown you before in my previous bubble editor here, you can completely customize the style of each chart and even add your own custom tooltip like I've done for this chart here. But that just gives you a good example of the different types of stacked bar charts you can create using the Chart.js plugin. If I jump back into my Notion doc here now, I'm just going to check off that we finished building out a stacked bar chart as well as a 100% stacked bar chart version of that. And that's all I wanted to run you through today within this tutorial. As you can see, it's never been easier to create a beautiful chart to visualize any static or dynamic data using the Chart.js plugin. As I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, there's plenty of existing documentation and examples you can see on the Chart.js plugin page. So I'd always recommend checking that out if you'd like to learn more. In the meantime, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more Bubble tutorials. And until next time, I wish you all the best on your own no-code journey.